Welcome, welcome everybody. Brian from Apex Detail here. This is part two of the Serious Lease World Mercedes series. If you're confused as to where we're at, you may want to start at the beginning with the first video. If not, hey, just jump right in. We have it decontaminated, washed, cleaned, taped off. We have the polisher, the pad, and the liquids picked out. We're going to start here with the rotary and a Lake Country pre-washed lamb's wool pad to cut. We're using the 3D ACA 500 Alpha Ceramic Abrasive uh, Compound. That will do the heavy lifting for us, guys, and we'll step down from there. We want to clean off the hood. We have some real severe swirls and imperfections. Let's clean these up a bit, then we can see what's underneath. Any deeper scratches uh, I may have to take care of. Uh, we already did some spot correction with 3000 grit, but let's remove and clean this hood up just a little bit, and then we can see what's underneath. I know there's rock chips to deal with. We will deal with those later. Uh, there was an attempt to fill in some rock chips years and years ago. They're a bit too high and obvious and obnoxious. Let's see if we can knock those down a bit and blend those in a little bit better. But first, we're going to use the rotary here and clean the hood up a bit so we can see what we're doing. If you like the channel, guys, you like the video or the series, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell, because Rockstar can be lazy getting videos out from your favorite channels. Uh, doesn't have to be mine. Uh, whatever channel you have that's a favorite, hit the subscribe button and also sh share. It helps them out a ton. With a microfiber pad attached to the 2-inch pneumatic polisher, we're going to get around the nozzles for the washer, the washer fluid. We'll get around the emblems and in some of the tighter areas and character lines of the hood here, and we have it completely cut. Many have asked to cover rock chips that don't have to deal with the Dr. Colored Chip kit uh, filling in with OEM. We're going to take care of that today. This one here is an attempt to fill it in earlier. They just, you know, filled it up way too high and never bothered to sand it down. So I'll take a razor blade and I'll put tape on either end to uh, sort of um, take down the aggression of the corner so they don't bite in and that will actually shave the top of that mountain of touch-up paint. Then we'll do a little bit of uh, wet sanding, get rid of the residue, and we can actually polish from there unless it needs to be filled in. So let me cover that. Let's take care of a chip that needs to be filled in. And this is a rock chip. I don't know. This helps me out. Maybe it'll help you guys out. It might not work through the camera, but this light here that magnifies up to eight times is uh, incredible with working on rock chips. This is a medical exam light. They're really kind of dirt cheap, and if you need to do a lot of chip repair, I would pick one up. The first thing I do is just a little bit of cleanup with 3000 grit and since this chip here is kind of on the contour of the hood here on a corner, it's going to be very light wet sanding to, to clean up uh, the area. The next thing we're going to do is clean out the inside of the chip that's a little bit rusty and it also has a lot of wax buildup and whatever else could have gotten in there, um, traffic film from the roadways. And a great tool to work in that area is going to be this thing here. This is on the end of those touch-up uh, vials that I can't stand, the ones that dry up within a couple days and you've wasted $15, $20 and it's never the right match anyways. The one good thing about them is this tip here. It's like, an, uh, like a ceramic sort of tip. Uh, and it's great to clean out the inside of these chips. Gouge out that um, rust, the old wax, the old sealants. Clean it out the best you can. And if the edges of the chip are pointed up towards the air, and they're about to come off and separate from the panel anyway, so you might as well get rid of those two and get everything nice and cleaned up and get ready to fill. What I'm going to do next, since I could see there was a previous attempt to fill in the chip, is clean out the outer edges that are kind of lifted up like the tip of a volcano. So I'll use that razor blade with the ends taped off so they don't dig in. You know, this is an edge. 
have to really be careful. Then I'll get, grab a cotton swab or something with a foam tip, an IP solution, or panel prep. Really get in there and clean out the inside of that chip. That'll ensure a good bond with your filler or uh, touch-up paint. This here, ladies and gentlemen, is the expensive way, uh, like, when I do it anyways, to fill in and repair rock chips because I'm going to need the car for an extra day or two. This is very time consuming. It is a fill wet sand, fill wet sand process. And when you fill, depending on what you use, you have to let it dry and cure for a day, sometimes even longer, maybe even two, depending on what surface it is, to ensure when you wet sand or polish over it, it doesn't lift that touch-up paint back out. It can really be a tedious, long process. I'm using a filler right here. The edge of it, the tip of the filler, get rid of that. That's old. It's been towards the, the end of the tip or the nozzle and it could be dried out. Get rid of that and get some of the fresh stuff on a plastic razor blade or a putty knife. And you will sort of um, get the blob on there, spread it out, and then shave in and around it. So the filler is just inside the crater of that chip, so to speak. After you've fiddled around that for a while, uh, getting rid of the excess around the edges, you can use uh, microfiber to get rid of some of that stuff. But don't worry about being too cute with it because we have to come back and do some wet sanding after it has cured anyways. Uh, you know, a minimum of a few hours with the filler, and then you can come in with your you know, 2500, 3000 grit, whatever you're comfortable using. Come in and very gently, since this is again on an edge, you want to wet sand and make everything perfectly smooth. The, the filler filled in the crater of that chip, bringing it to the level of the clear and sanding it and then cleaning it off. It'll take it back down a little bit so there's enough room for your touch-up paint to go in there and fill it up the rest of the way. I hope that makes sense. You're now ready to grab the vial of touch-up paint or whatever you have. And this little touch-up pen here uh, has a tiny point and is actually perfect for touch-up. You can either, either dip the point into a little bit of paint or you can fill up that cup and it very slowly drains down into the tip so you can dab paint into it and you're almost going to be... You're going to be doing what a tattoo artist does. You're going to be tapping in that paint just like the ink would go into your skin. And you can see that's exactly what we're doing. We're not uh, using brush strokes like a brush on canvas. We're just tapping that, uh, tapping the paint onto the panel, into the chip, the crater of the chip. So this is good. We're built up above the clear a little bit, and that's fine because it will settle even, and then we can wet sand. But this is the waiting game. This is what takes forever. You want to let that sit for a day, maybe even two, maybe even three. If you mess with it beforehand, it may pull right back out. So in the meantime, let's jump over to this 55 Ford F100 pickup. Totally redone from the frame up. All we have to do is finish the paint. I say all we have to do because everything's painted, the inside and the outside. It's a lot of work, but it's, you know, it's freshly painted. It's just, uh, it has some hazing on it from the buffer and some wet sanding and we're going to finish that down as you can see it's painted under the hood it's painted in the fender wells uh, everything is done up no expense spared on this one and that's exactly what we want to get rid of right there let's get to the clear coat on this uh, we're first going to start out and try perfect finish we have a couple areas that we're going to use for test areas and figure out the best combination because I'm not sure what type of clear this was all I know is there's plenty of it they gave a lot of clear to mess with but that doesn't mean I'm going to be shaving it and going crazy uh, just starting off with uh, an aggressive pad and aggressive liquid I want to start off with the least aggressive method necessary, even on this new paint job that has a ton, mills and mills of clear, not necessary to shave it. So I have a very light foam polishing pad. We have the perfect finish from Sonax. Let's see if that will get the job done. If so, we could stick with that and leave a ton of clear on there for the customer. Uh, this is an area of the fender here where they lean over and work on the, the engine. If they're not using fender aprons, they're going to need a lot of clear.
Okay, that will do it. Let me get the polisher out of the way here, wipe off that residue. Grab you guys and bring you in close so we can both see at the exact same time if this is going to be just enough and uh, we can continue on the, around the rest of the truck with this because that's really as bad. The swirling that you saw, that's as bad as it gets. That's the worst case scenario. see here a great attempt but it did leave some stuff behind so it just wasn't quite aggressive enough we're going to step it up a little bit we're going to find something where we can just do uh, two passes one crisscross pattern and move on all right what we will do in the second test area is attach the Eurofiber 5050 pad stick with the Sonax perfect finish but a switch up in pads. This pad here, obviously one of my favorite, but it's very effective in a lot of different scenarios. I believe it will do the trick in this one here. Let's give it a shot. Good enough. Once again, let me wipe off the residue. I'll bring you uh, guys in along with me and we'll both see uh, together at the exact same time if that has done the trick. A rotary polisher works just fine for this process as well. Uh, I switch back and forth uh, doing correction all day. I just get tired of one polisher, switch to another till I get tired of that one, and sometimes switch back or I'll switch brands. Uh, I have the Max Shine 15, or uh, this one here is the 21 millimeter throw, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, I, then I'll go sometimes to the 15 millimeter throw or I'll go back to the rotary. I just have to switch things up to keep it correct. When you're doing this stuff all day long, you have to sort of inth invent things to, to to keep it fresh, to keep your, your mind on your job and what you're doing. Uh, autopilot is fine, but that's a good way to mess up. All right, I wanted to do a larger area, see what that looked like first before that was going to be the final selection. And we can pull the tape off and, and look at this 50-50 here. But this is definitely what I'm going to use, uh, go around the old 55 here and, and get it done. That's going to draw a close to the second part here. Um, by the time we're finished getting around this, this truck, this won't take long. Then we'll have the paint chips back on the Mercedes harden up enough uh, that we can wet sand and polish on top of them that they won't pull back out of that crater and start all over again. So that's where we're going to pick up with the next video. I really thank you guys for stopping by. Um, you know, Let me know down in the comments section if you're enjoying this. I'll catch you guys later.